Honorable Dr. Rudal Monigal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the Debe Rhythm Section. Give them a round of applause. You feel tonight the whole place mash up, mash up. The political leader, the Honorable Mrs. Kamala Prasad Bisesa, opposition leader, and the next Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Dr. Gregory Bisesa, parliamentary colleagues, and a very special hello to members on the platform this evening, our 2018 President Medal winner of the CSEC, Ms. Cassandra Khan from Debe. Our brilliant security expert, Mr. Denny, give him a round of applause. Young and brilliant Dr. Anil Suraj Bali from Mohes Road in Orapooch East. Mr. Jared Pereira, a brilliant activist and businessman. The veteran, the stalwart, Dr. Alan Sami, chairman of the Penal Debe Regional Corporation. Our winning candidate for Barack Power West, the very young, vibrant, and dynamic Mr. Nicholas Kanhai. And of course, a soldier in our battle decades and decades ago, Roland Hall. Brothers and sisters, we identify our colleagues to tell you that this is the talent that the people of Oropooch East and the United National Congress will offer Trinidad and Tobago in a few months, in a few short months, when we retake the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Today, today this nation is unrecognizable from the paradise that Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa left in 2015. Brothers and sisters, they have destroyed every institution possible. They have destroyed every agency of government. They have caused this country to be in a sea of depression, despair. Today, they took a billion dollar hospital built by Kamala Prasad Bisesa and turned it into a drugstore because Dial Singh had a drugstore and it busted in 1990. This country has 1.3 million people and 1 million pothole. Every day, every day we exchange videos of robbery and indecent and obscene videos of crime victims. This country is now run on remote control as the Prime Minister scrambles to save his government. His latest madcap plan is to bring in a foreign expert to tell Gary Griffith what to do. You heard from Mr. Denny, we have the plans, we have the policies, we have the program, and we have the leader. <laughs> Rowley and Barbados talking about crime being ex exotic or erotic, I don't know which one to use. Talking about crime being exotic and so on, and it's a global phenomenon. But you knew that before you became prime minister. You knew the challenge. You were not man enough to deal with that challenge. After four years, they are now in their fifth year, the final leg of their race, so to speak. As the months count away, the, the weeks go, they have no plan. They are clueless, hapless. And today, Rowley wants to bring foreign expert. The last foreign expert he bring, a fellow called Wiley. You remember him in the energy sector? It cost us $10 million and counting. And poor fella, he got sick. We wish him all the best. He has to go. So we want no foreign expert, we want a local expert as Prime Minister in the Honorable Kamala Basad Bisesa. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, they cannot fix a water leak on the road. They cannot fix roads, they cannot fix anything because they're, they're honestly the most incompetent cabinet and government this country has ever seen in its history. I challenge anybody to tell us otherwise. In Greenville, this is the only country where one day somebody calls the MP office and say they flood away. And the next day they call the MP office and say we are getting water for two weeks. It's the only country this happens in because of their incompetence. Brothers and sisters, today we are at a juncture. We are at a historical point in our evolution. 
This is the most important election we will ever face. If the worst nightmare is to occur and Rowley go back there in office, this country going back to 1962 and before. They will, they will completely destroy everything. Brothers and sisters, Rowley is leading a sort of totalitarian dictatorship. You want to know what I mean by that? Brothers and sisters, you want to know what I mean by that? In countries of the world where there are totalitarian dictatorships, you can measure it in a certain way. Look in this country, Rowley takes $2 million to buy paintings, while brothers and sisters, they, they destroy, they remove, they close down the funds for children, the milk fund that Kamla Pasad Bissessa created for children. Two million for paintings. They hire somebody to rewrite the history of Trinidad and Tobago. That is a sign of totalitarianism when they want children to read what they believe the history of this country should be. You remember a government before spent millions of dollars on a flag. I have one for you tonight, brothers and sisters. You will not believe this one. A couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, they came to Parliament, announced $500,000 for to refurbish, at that time they were saying, do plans and design to refurbish the official residence of the Prime Minister in Tobago. When we were in office, Yudika told me as line minister, that they wanted $6 million to refurbish that house for the Prime Minister in Tobago. Well, stupid me going to see the Prime Minister. I said, Prime Minister, we want $6 million to refurbish the house in Tobago. At that moment, the Prime Minister nearly threw me out the, the window of the top floor. She said, but you crazy to spend that kind of money on a house. You crazy. We have to provide grants for the poor, the underprivileged. We have, to, we have to provide water. We have to provide, provide jobs. We don't have to provide house, luxury house for our prime minister. Well, we cancel everything one time. Rowley comes in power. Notice the, the, connect the dots. He becomes the prime minister, first prime minister ever, with responsibility for Udicott. Udicott then takes responsibility to build the official residence in Tobago. It starts at $5 million, brothers and sisters. Tonight, I want to put it to you. It has gone from $500,000 to $2 million. $2 million turned to $9 million. $9 million turned to $18 million. $18 million is quickly reaching $20 million. Udicott under Rowley is leaking taxpayers' money, presumably to build a new house for the Prime Minister in Tobago. They are not only building houses, they are building roads like highway to get to the house. But you know, brothers and sisters, when I was growing up, you know, mommy used to tell me, this is when ducks suck an suck egg. When ducks suck an egg, you could bathe them, you could groom them, you could train them. You know what the doctor go back and do? I ain't say no more. When we look at what is happening in Tobago, listen to this. Two contractors have been awarded the work in Tobago. One is a contractor by the name of Patrick Parks, called Parks International. The other one is Warner Construction. Warner Construction and Parks International are doing construction and road work for the Prime Minister residence. Warner Construction, I asked tonight to Udicott, wasn't Warner Construction the same contractor or subcontractor on the Scarborough Hospital project? You all remember something called Land Aid? Tobago is the only place in the world where gravel and sand does walk away. It's the only place gravel and sand does walk. Scarborough Hospital contractor appears today to be the same contractor. Tonight, I ask Udicott to tell us whether any of those two contractors are also building a private housing development in Tobago at this time. It is improper, certainly, it is improper and unethical to award contracts to contractors large scale who are at the same time doing their private construction. What will happen is simple. Trucks will, will take the wrong corner. 
the truck will take the wrong corner and go by the wrong side. Today, I ask Utica to confirm whether or not Warner Construction is also doing a private housing development. Whether or not Udicott has received information in their logbooks or through their officials that again, hear this one, materials seem to be moving from one compound of an official construction site to a private compound of another construction site. This is land day two. Anytime you put them there, gravel and sand walk in. So tonight, Udicott must answer. Is it true that those are the contractors, brothers and sisters? Is it true there's a private housing construction project? Have they received reports of construction materials moving from one site to another? This speaks of corruption. Rowley talks about corruption all the time. He's Mr. Prime Minister of Corruption. Heinz talking about, you know this fellow Heinz? He's Minister of Facebook. Before that fellow drink a cup of tea, and eat a bread and cheese in the morning. He make eight Facebook um, posting. Eight. Before he drink tea and eat bread and cheese. Whole morning he on Facebook. Well, you have to be on Facebook when you do a good looking face. You know? yeah. yeah, he's way to go. Brothers and sisters, they talk about corruption. Rowley say he didn't know Marlene going to get locked up. But you know who UNC, which one in UNC getting locked up? You hear that? He said that uh, Marlene getting locked up is a ray of hope. That is good for the country. Tonight we must tell him, well, if the whole cabinet get locked up, that is salvation to this country. <laughs> brothers, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, Keith Rowley cannot play two cards now. He wanted to attack us as corrupt in the parliament for four years, David Lee knows. They will stand up and pour scorn on us and look to us and point finger. You get in lock up, you get in corrupt. That's what they do. You know when they was watching across the floor, they didn't watch behind their back? <laughs> and they used to teach me, when you're crossing the road, right? You must look left, look right, look left again. But they're only watching across the road and they get bounced down. So uh, that corruption nonsense is out of the question. They will play the race card, which is their final card. And as a, to a totalitarian government, I warn you, watch for arrest of religious leaders, political opponents. As I speak to you now, trade union leader and minority leader in the Tobago House of Assembly, Watson Duke is being questioned by the police. Today, tomorrow, he could be charged for making statements. Understand what is happening here. Persons who make statements against this government now face persecution on charges of sedition and treason and all that type of thing. That is the work of dictatorship, brothers and sisters, and I warn you about that tonight as they build big, big houses for themselves. Because you know them are custom. When Mrs. Passat Bissessa was in the diplomatic center residence, they make big, big controversy and scandal. Her sister, a nurse, was staying there, or some relative, for a holiday or short term. Anybody know how much people live in the Prime Minister's house today? They are operating there like the Waltons family. And the night is good boy, good night, John Boy, good night, Mary Ellen, good night. Every time the taxpayer mining hardback men in that place there, big adult children working, the taxpayer buying milk and diaper. We don't know who living in that house, how much of them living in the house. It reminds me of a Calypso. I had a fella from Mayaro, he named Zandoli. Anybody ever hear about Zandoli? <laughs> he sing a Calypso, he say when he come home in the night, it always have a man in the house. When he asks his wife, he say, who is that? She say, well, that's my family. <laughs> Zandoli say, he tells she, he say, you better mark down the name of everybody in your family and give it. Tonight we want to tell Rowley, mark down the name of everybody in the family and give it to her. So we're going to know who in the family and who not. Because it is an abuse of power and office to be doing things like that and asking the taxpayer to foot the bill. And one day we will get the bill. Brothers and sisters, the second and final matter I want to raise involve the recent appointments at the oil companies. Now when I'm telling you this, let me just tell you as well. Don't get tied up with the name of company. I think what they're trying to do is, is form so much company, they go tie we up and we go forget corruption. 
So forget the name. Just get the essence of the story. They fired Espinay. He gone. Board gone. They have now hired a board. In that board is the Prime Minister lawyer. Is the Prime Minister golf partner. Is the husband of the Prime Minister campaign manager. They're going around the table, a, a lineman table, and everybody who lineman with them, they put them on board. The only man to appoint now is the barman. That is how they're doing it. And he appoint these people, they have no experience, no expertise in the energy sector. With great respect to Michael Kwamina, he has no experience in the energy business. He has no experience in business. I think he just has no experience. And he is there, but there are, there are matters that arise, and I will tell you now, three important matters. There is a situation where I raised concerns about Keith Rowley's connection to AV drilling last year in Parliament. To this day, no one has disputed the emails addressed to the Honorable Prime Minister that was sent to his cousin, Rollinston Rowley. You all remember that? Rollinston Rowley said, I get the email, but it's really for me. I get it by mistake. Rowley said, that is not my email address, so don't call my name. Bash said nothing. Avi Drillin said nothing. But no one has denied that that email is correct. Today, I am in the courthouse. Rowley's lawyer is Michael Kwamina. By virtue of that appointment, he now becomes the custodian, the gatekeeper, the guard of all the records, of all the documents, of all the evidence in the AV drilling fake oil market. So, Michael Kwamina is conflicted, and there is a situation of bias and apparent bias where a reasonable observer will believe that he will be biased in, in dealing with this matter. How could you be put your lawyer? So let me tell you in layman language. Suppose my lawyer subpoena the documents from Petrotrin and those companies. We want documents, we want evidence, we want witness. What Michael Kwamena going and do? He going and cross-examine himself? He had to come to court and do what? Then we may need personnel to come there. He is the political boss of the personnel who must go to testify. You all understand that? You all understand the danger? Secondly, Petrotrin is involved in what is called an arbitration matter. An arbitration matter. Petrotrin is involved in arbitration with AV drilling. Arbitration is a big word that means this. I appoint a representative, you appoint a representative, and we appoint an umpire, like a cricket match. And we determine what is the outcome. If I wrong, you wrong. If you pay me, I pay you. That's called arbitration in the simple form. Michael Kwamina now represents the company and has a duty to the company in law. But his client is alleged to have a connection with AV drilling involving the same fake oil matter. So Michael Kwamina, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. What, what will happen if Petrotrin has to sue AV drilling? Who Kwamina representing? Keith Rowley or Petrotrin? He representing the oil company or his, or his client? This leads to the, the, to the possibility of apparent bias, and he is conflicted. And tonight, I call upon Kwamina to resign forthwith from that position as chairman of Trans Tobago Heritage Holding Company Limited. The final part of that story is this. AV Drilling has a lawsuit against the political leader of this party in the court. That lawsuit is for defamation. The person who brought AV Drilling and fake oil to the national attention was the political leader of the UNC, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa. It, it was in Coover. AV Drilling sued. But in the court, there's a request for a very confidential document called the Kroll Report. It is a report of an international agency that undertook an independent report into AV drilling. They have asked for that report. It hasn't arrived yet. Nobody see it in that matter. But you know who's going to see it first? The personal lawyer of Keith Rowley, who is also accused of involvement in this matter.
You all understand what they're doing here? They will also determine whether Petrotrain and us taxpayers pay millions and maybe hundreds of millions of dollars to AV drilling. What a way to finance an election. What a way to finance an election. Brothers and sisters, I make no accusation against any of them, but to raise the issue of apparent bias and conflict of interest of the highest order on Michael Kwamena, Newman, I think his name is Newman George, and others. You know this fellow Newman George, if he was an attorney at law, by now he become Chief Justice. Huh? That is a personal friend of the Prime Minister in everything that they do. And tonight, brothers and sisters, as I end now, I want to re remind you that the AV drilling matter is before the court, before arbitration in one case, and before another court in a defamation matter. And Rowley, what he has done with these appointments, he has placed in strategic positions persons who are known close to him, and, they are, and we can say it, who are his friends. This is wrong, it is unethical, it is improper, it is possibly illegal. And it is a matter we will be raising in the coming days on other platforms. So brothers and sisters, in closing, might I call upon you first, may I thank the people of Arupuchis. Let's hear a round of applause to the people of Arupuchis for coming out tonight in their numbers. Tonight, we call on you to rally around the United National Congress. This is not a time for personal animosity and division and disunity. Our country is at stake tonight. We must come together as one. All are members of the family of the United National Congress. We must come together united if we are to confront the People's National Movement. This demon called the PNM is an institution of tyranny. They will destroy every segment of this country if we leave them there. But we will not. Unity is critical, brothers and sisters. And as we go along, I ask you to lift your heads high. Be proud. Be confident. We are confident. We have worked very hard in the parliament. And this party is working harder and harder and harder each and every single day. So that we will capture the requisite number of seats and votes as we get together, brothers and sisters. Don't, I leave you by telling you, do not accept the propaganda of the PNM. They talk about Cambridge Analytica and think all of that is rubbish. That is rubbish. They have no evidence of any wrongdoing by any UNC official or former minister. Imagine they reach a stage where they have no evidence. They tell you, watch Netflix now. You have to watch Netflix to see evidence. The next thing they might tell you is watch Disneyland. Brothers and sisters, they have no evidence. They have no concrete information. Absolutely nothing. They are holding on by their fingernails now. They are desperate, and in their desperation, they will say and do anything. So thank you all for coming out tonight. We look forward to hearing our political leader. Long live the United National.